the main things I look at on Instagram is shares and saves. That's when I know I've done well. Cause that means it was so good that somebody sent it to somebody or they said, I need to save that so I visit it later. Then I'll be like, okay, that's the topic that I should probably continue to focus on to help more people. Hey, Smart Chiropractors, welcome to Interviews by the Smart Chiropractor. I'm Dr. Jeff Langmed here with my co-host, Dr. Jason Deitch. Today, we have the opportunity to sit down and chat with Dr. Christopher Marvin. You might know him on Instagram as Dr. says DC. We'll drop that link down below. Marv, thanks for chatting with us today. Of course, it's an absolute honor. Well, it is our pleasure. We noticed what you are up to online and specifically on Instagram. And then when we clicked in your link tree, we noticed a few things that were very interesting to us. And that was membership, subscription, recurring revenue. We were talking pre-roll about that. That's where we're going to go. But let's catch everybody listening and watching up to where we're at today. You're a relatively new chiropractor. What was the history that brought you up to and into chiropractic? Yeah, I'm like 30 seconds old in this profession. Um, I did my undergrad for pre-physical therapy, worked in a hospital in an acute setting, thought I wanted to do that. Got into this industry, did very well. So I say, why go back to school when I'm making this much money? Um, did that for a long period of time. Then I decided I wanted to go back to school. Um, side note, I've had nine surgeries and been told not to work out or play volleyball or run triathlons and all that stuff. And that didn't sit well with me. So I was always trying to learn and I did the health and fitness industry thing for 14 years and then decided to go back to school, uh, realized chiropractic helped me more than all the PT I went to personally and saw the scope of practice being a little bit more ideal to me. Uh, so decided to go back to school uh, in my mid thirties. Um, happy to say my previous experience kind of gave me a pretty big advantage. Um, so still though, studied my butt off, worked really, really hard. Um, in fact, I would do phone calls and Zoom calls during the lockdowns because I couldn't shadow and somebody recommended I listen to you. So I've been listening to your podcast. It's like Q6. So this is pretty wild. And I got my license August 1st. That's how new I am. And I'm in a cash-based rehab heavy uh, practice, no insurance. Uh, everybody gets exercise. Hopefully they do it. <laughs> and uh, trying to yeah, let's get multiple income streams going and maximize my ability to help others based on my personal experience. Hey, Doc, do you have an email list of 300, 500, or more? If so, please connect with our team at thesmartchiropractor.com. With Patient Pilot, we can activate that email list and start generating reactivations into your practice each and every week. To schedule a demo and learn more, head over to thesmartchiropractor.com. Again, that is thesmartchiropractor.com. But right now, we'll head back over into this awesome interview on interviews by the Smart Chiropractor. Marv, that's awesome. And uh, I guess welcome to the profession. Uh, Thank you. Know, it's, uh, it's a remarkable place to be. You come, I believe, with some strategic advantages um, as opposed to just graduating high school, just graduating college, just graduating chiropractic school and getting out into the world. Uh, you've lived in the world of fitness, the fitness industry, and so on. What do you think you've learned in terms of just your your psychology and you know, I'll say business models that you have been successful with the past that you can see applying here in the profession that probably isn't yet mainstream in the profession because probably most have been stuck on a sort of transactional fee for service uh, based on the fact you know, in most cases, most of the time, insurance covers X, so I'll charge Y and, you know, basically work towards the insurance companies as opposed to people, their lifestyles and the benefits of longer term care, just like fitness and lifestyle. What have you learned that you can see bringing to the profession that you think will be beneficial to you and other chiropractors to know? So through the practice, I offer nutrition coaching, and that's a monthly recurring thing with check-ins via Jane virtually um, once a week. So I do that as a membership. I'm currently working on my first online course to sell uh, and help folks learn a particular topic that is greatly misunderstood. I should be getting involved with a virtual and in-person seminar launching early next year with somebody else. Um, trying to figure out a way to start a uh, high quality targeted supplement uh, membership uh, procurance process for patients. In the fitness industry years ago, I wrote a book on nutrition. That was seven years ago. 
needs to be updated. So I started researching that and then decided to focus on this first little online course first and then go back to that. And then I still do, I'm very particular and picky, but I'll still do my online fitness coaching. Um, that's separate from the practice. Um, so that's definitely blasted on my Instagram. I'm trying to do better because I've relied on word of mouth since I was ran my own training platform and business for so long. But I'm going to, you'll see a concerted effort to bring that more awareness to my page. Um, and just trying to help out wherever I can giving workshops. Most of them are free. Some of them are paid. I did like a lifting biomechanics workshop for patients. That was a very low fee, um, things like that. So that's what I'm trying to ramp up as well, but I'm just trying to help in my marketing strategy, not paying for ads or anything for my personal page, um, is giving high quality information. Um, trying to help as many people as I can. I know that's slower growth, just like doing cash instead of insurance is slower growth, but it's more important for me to be helping the folks I want to, practicing how I want to, and not being in a position where I grow resentful towards the patient because their insurance won't pay for something because that's what I would do. I would still do it and be like, I'm doing this for free. Um, so that's how I can kind of make sure I'm happy with what I'm doing. Um, always learning and making the biggest impact I can positively. Um, Cause I definitely made a ton of mistakes in my early twenties. This is chiropractic podcast, but I've been open about, I had bad body dysmorphia in my early twenties. So that's a topic that I'm very, the psychology of nutrition and exercise and stuff like that. I don't think that gets brought up enough. Um, and then just trying to provide value rather than a uh, sign up, sign up, sign up. Here's a huge sale. I don't, do that. So that's my approach currently. Now yeah, you're, you're speaking our language. We talk about teach and invite consistently. Yep. You're describing how you exactly put that in action. I love it. Secondarily, we're a big fan of avoiding the deep discounts because when you provide value, it might be that long game as you alluded to, but it's worth it in the end. Something that I would be interested to know your thoughts on regarding memberships and subscriptions, what we'll just generally refer to as recurring revenue, because there's a variety of different ways to do it. I love that you highlighted a few and opened a few eyes there. We think about that almost completely contrarian. Like, so in other words, Jason and myself, and I think you as well, but I'm interested in your thoughts on this. We think about it as the foundation of the business. And then if you're selling a la carte, that goes on top of that. Yet in so many healthcare providers and definitely in many, in 95% of chiropractic practices, everything's fee for service. And it's like difficult to wrap the head around what can I do and provide value, whether it's philosophical, whether it's just like a business acumen. I don't, it may be a combination of all. Do you believe recurring revenue is fundamental to your ultimate long game and business success? Or how does it fit in with the overarching theme of where you're trying to take your business? It's going to be crucial because I will forever be low volume. New patient exams are an hour. Follow-ups are typically half an hour. That means that I'm not going to be able to see 40, 50 people a day, nor would I want to personally. So having the ability to generate uh, outside sources of revenue, and that's just what I'm focusing on in this field. I still want to get into other sources of revenue because um, it's important to have multi multiple income streams like you just alluded to. And instead of it being the cherry on top, I think it could be the cake, so to speak. And I totally agree with it being a foundation. It is going to be a bit of work to get that foundation going. Um, at least I think it will be based on my previous experience. But once you kind of get it going, it snowballs. And it's nice when, man, I had a very slow week. Well, my recurring revenue is going to at least cover me for this week and not have to be so stressed out where then you become so focused on get somebody in the door, get somebody in the door. You're losing sight of the big picture and you're doing those rash deep discounts or maybe taking somebody on that you would be better off referring to somebody keeping that patient first. Marv, you, you, you are hitting right on, I think the, the nerve metaphorically that, uh, you know, I think this, this addresses. And what I'm hearing from you, if you would expand on it a bit, is how important it is, I've heard you say, uh, to be of service to people, to make a difference in people's lives, to be able to, as you said, I do it for free because I know it's the right thing, to elaborate more from the business standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, you know, unless you're independently wealthy, you've got to be able to pay the bills each and every month. It sounds like, and I guess I, I, this is a question, you are subscribing to what we agree to, which is you generate the money so that you can practice the way you want to practice. 
you don't practice any which way you need to in order to generate the money so that you can be miserable doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like you get that. Um, and maybe can you speak to sort of, I guess, maybe your courage um, and, and what drives you? Is it mentors? Is it sort of just wisdom of maturity of not just graduating college and you know having some years of experience to know the difference between doing it for the money and being responsible enough to generate enough money so you can do what it is you really want to do the way you really want to do it. I've had jobs and positions where I made a ton of money and I was miserable and it's not worth it. Sure, baseline money could get a little bit of happiness, but studies show, right, once you're around the 70, 75,000 mark a year, it doesn't really make a huge difference for happiness. So I'd much rather be fulfilled and feel like I'm living my purpose. I had a lot of personal struggles in my early 20s. Um, so I have a new lease on life. We'll so just leave it at that. So every day is a blessing and having some sense of self-worth and self-esteem and pride in what I do allows me to kind of be contrarian because to a lot of folks where, why are you doing cash only? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I'm not going to give up on my vision of what I want to do uh, just because it's a little bit harder um, or maybe a little bit slower going from the get-go. Um, living my purpose means way more than any bank statement. So I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm very blessed my fiance feels the same way because that would, <laughs> that makes that life helps. way easier. Yes, <laughs> that always helps. Yes, let's be very real. My long-term goal is all practice money, recurring revenue, and money from patients becomes my seed money for outside endeavors. So I'm already close to pulling the trigger on a something totally different from chiropractic to get other revenue streams so I can continue practicing how I am and not then having to, on so low volume, my price has to be so exponential. Very few people could afford that because um, I've seen that happen as well. Um, so I'm trying to find that happy medium of making it where I could do what I need to do to survive and get everything going and then making sure there's buy-in from the patient. Because if you do something for so cheap or free, I learned in the fitness industry, people don't take it seriously and they don't honor it and they don't work as hard. So I learned that of I'll be the cheapest person. That was terrible. Once rates went up, there was buy-in, there was automatically kind of filters out to people who want your type of service and are looking for what you provide that will help and that was a big, hard lesson for me to learn in the fitness industry, especially when I quit the corporate gym job to start my own business and platform. Those who pay, pay attention. That's the, that is the truth of the matter. And it's a hard lesson, I think, for nearly anybody to learn. Uh, yep. However, something I want to touch on, and it almost ties into that a little bit. What I'm going to say now is going to excite 5% of the audience and <laughs> potentially repel 95% is the word sales. Yeah, everybody's scared of that word. It's, you know, it has all the attachment and baggage that, the individuals bring to it, not what yep. it has in and amongst yep. itself. But with recurring revenue, let's just, I, I, I'd just love to know your process, right? You, 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 you have nutritional counseling, you have fitness, you have chiropractic. Clearly you have some of those things in the link tree. And I, I, this, this is an open question. Are you, do you put out content and hope they click on it? Is it something you discuss with patients when appropriate? How do you consider the sales process? Because ultimately, the products and services you have available are designed to help people live a better life and hit their goals. And you want to match it to what you're seeing, what they're telling you and where they want to go. How do you bridge that gap and put that together in a meaningful way that doesn't make you feel cheap or slimy, but also presses on the gas a little bit. So it's not just something that exists that nobody takes advantage of. To me, sales is when you have a product you don't believe in, because then you have to do the used car salesman thing. <laughs> I took a brief pause from the fitness industry for a period of time and I sold long-term care and Medicare insurance door to door. So I got really good with being told no and selling a product I kind of believed in, kind of didn't. So having something you believe in definitely makes it easier. The information I provide for free will help folks, which you saw, right? But to maximize that, yes, I have to impart my knowledge and uh, experience to help them out. I'm never pushy. I probably could be a little pushier, right? Uh, typically most, like for instance, most patients I treat in office come in once a week, once every two weeks. I'm not doing three times a week for the rest of your life or you get spine cancer. I'm not doing that nonsense. So believing in it. And then also, hey, I also offer X, Y, and Z. Let's see if we're a good fit. Um, if I'm not a good fit for somebody, I will say no. So I've turned down two coaching inquiries in the last week. 
uh, because it would not have been a good fit. And then that's me just being desperate and that could snowball negatively than negative reviews, negative press, so to speak. I don't want that to happen either. Does that answer the question? I think it does. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at, you're doing a great job on Instagram. H how do you think about creating content? What's your philosophy? How do you choose your topics? How frequently do you do it? What, what are your thoughts and, and what should you teach people about how you're approaching your Instagram feed? Exercise tutorials are, I like meathead biomechanics. So that's my, the gym bro in me. So I'll forever do that. Uh, the other stuff, whether it be uh, the practice page doing, you know, patient treatments, or this is what we do, or excerpts from workshops and clips. I try and kind of rotate through a variety of topics. So hardcore bodybuilding, fitness training, some nutrition for everybody else that doesn't focus on that minutia and those tiny details at the very top of the pyramid that gives you half a percent. Let's focus on big rocks. That is a common theme. So I try and stay on the big rock things. I'm getting a little bit more vocal and trying to dispel myths in the world of health and fitness that a lot of people will parrot. So some of them are very unedited rant videos, I call them, and other ones are highly edited with voiceovers and a good amount of video editing. I try to do a blend of both because that way I'm not a one trick pony, so to speak. And I try and rotate through those various topics and I'll kind of look at my page, like what have I not talked on in a while? Boom. And then you also notice when I do a lot of training tutorials, it's because I have new programs I'm putting together for clients. So that's kind of like, okay, all right, Marv got two or three people to sign up because there's been three training tutorial videos in the last week. So that kind of, that gives that away. Um, but yeah, I'm the big on uh, videos way, make a thousand words way better than picture, keep subtitles on there, try and I'm trying to get away from doctor speak. I noticed early on, I was using way too many syllables for words and terms that the general public didn't recognize. So that helps nobody, uh, other than makes it look like I'm trying to look smart and nobody appreciates that. Let's be real. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not trying to stroke my ego and using the biggest words possible in a spelling bee and try to provide actionable tips and then call to actions typically, or just, Hey, if you're interested in this, reach out to the link tree. Um, I have started doing within the last six days, paid ads for the practice page, which then will involve DMing folks who interact with the boosted reels. Um, I think that's much better than the old school, huge discount, click on this, go on Groupon, whatever. Um, I think that's the new way. Cause it also seems more intimate, so to speak. And it's not so from 5,000 feet away distance. That's how I approach it. And it's a learning process. It's so as I go, I kind of see what hits with engagement and what I get comments on. Uh, the main things I look at on Instagram is shares and saves. That's when I know I've done well. I don't really care about the hearts. I care about the shares and saves because that means it was so good that somebody sent it to somebody or they said, I need to save that so I can visit it later. And then that then I'll be like, okay, that's a topic. I put it down and I'll look at the end of every month what had the most engagement that way. Okay, that's a topic that I should probably continue to focus on to help more people. Hey, it's Dr. Jason. I just want to take a brief moment and invite you to schedule a demo with our team to learn more about our patient pilot automated email campaigns. They are the smartest way to reactivate the people you've seen over the years in the past. Check it out, schedule a demo. We look forward to helping you help more people by piloting your patients back into your practice. Now back to our show. That is a really, really solid tip for everybody listening. If you're out there as a creator or a to be creator, uh, focusing on those is absolutely critical. You bring up a conversation Jason and I often have when we're talking about deep discounts and it's the Seth Godinism. Yes. Yeah, the, the problem with the race to the bottom is you might win. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, I think yeah. uh, we, we will wholeheartedly agree with you there. I know we're going to be up against it, but I got one more quick question before we wrap. And that is, what do you utilize for uh, just like technical gear? So what do you have for either a phone or a camera? What do you use for editing? What's maybe a quick hit list for those creators out there that are watching where you're doing? I'm like, damn, that looks great. How do I get started with that? From a tech standpoint, what do you use? So everybody will laugh. I got extremely good at using iMovie for editing and it's free. So everybody, I get that question a couple times a week from other docs. Just like, hey, just reaching out. What do you use? So I got really good at that. Uh, we have a microphone, Silkani, a tiny Silkani microphone. Uh, my lighting could be a little bit better. I apologize. We'll have a ring light and two or three other umbrellas. We have a gimbal that if I'm filming by myself, I could flip it around and it'll track me. So that's a new bit of equipment I just got. Um, so that's how I've been able to film some workshops instead of just like, I was filming workshops from a distance. You can't see the slides. 
it doesn't follow you if I'm moving, demonstrating exercise. So that's been my pivot for that. Apps on my phone. Again, people will laugh. Nothing fancy. Typorama, Fonto, iMovie. I just use my, I have an old iPhone XR. I probably need to upgrade my camera, but it works for the time being, right? And then um, I subscribe to keep it simple. I used to pay for a captions generating service. Now I just use the auto-generated captions, whether it be TikTok or Instagram. So I try and keep my overhead there low, so to speak. Um, Because in the past, I'd always buy, when I started a podcast years ago, I bought all the fanciest equipment. I'm like, I didn't need to do that. Like, grow into it and learn as you go. I think that is a great bit of advice. Thank you for sharing all that. We're going to be up against it. Thank you, Marv, so much for taking time out of your day. This has been awesome. Uh, I love the, when you discuss recurring revenue and memberships. I love the fact that we're able to touch on social and creation. So I'm going to encourage everybody listening and watching. It's probably one of those episodes you want to rewind, you know, just take out that notebook, jot down what's going on. We'll also be sure to drop your Instagram down below. So anybody listening and watching, if you want to connect with Marv, see what he's up to, check out the link tree, see, see how he goes about his business as he builds, grows, and develops. Check it all out. We'll drop that link down below. Marv, thanks for coming on and chatting with us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for watching this video on The Smart Chiropractor. To not miss a single thing that's clinically oriented, marketing oriented, or more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel today.